I have been challenged by a fellow YouTuber, which I'm not gonna name because I don't want the hate to go to him. But he basically gave me an idea for a video. Five reasons why your Hobie kayak sucks. And I'm gonna start with number one. You pay too much money for it. Let me tell you something. I've been thinking about this and I'm gonna make a video about it that Hobie kayaks are overpriced. To me, they cost at least $1,000 more than the value you're getting in 2023 or 2024 when you're watching this video. The Hobie Outback is an amazing kayak. Love it, it's one of my favorite kayak ever. But $3,700 for that kayak? That's way too much money. $2,700 will be an excellent price. And just when that kayak came out, it was under that. It was about close to $3,000 and before that, even less money. So, dude, I think it's too much money for the Hobie Outback. And don't get me started with the Pearl Anglers. What is it, like almost $6,000 for a 360 PA 14 or 12? Or the normal one? You're talking about 44, like $4,800? Not including taxes. Again, at least $1,000 over value. That means they're too expensive and that sucks. If you pay that much money for a hobby kayak, that sucks. Let me know in the comments if you agree with the pricing for the hobby kayaks. The second reason why your hobby kayak sucks is because a lot of you guys were led to believe that Hobie is the best. That your Hobie kayak is the best kayak you can buy. And that's simply not true. It's probably the best for a lot of people. They're gonna love it, they're gonna enjoy it, but not everybody will be happy with a Hobie kayak. What if you just want a paddle kayak and add a motor to it? Maybe your Hobie kayak is not the best solution for that. What if you want instant reverse? Or other things that you won't get on a Hobie kayak? A better price. So it's not the best. And also when it comes to quality and what you get out of what you're paying for, it's not the best at all, at all. They're not even the number one company when it comes to sales of unit or, or volume of dollars sold. They're not, simply, they're not the best like people believe they are. And that sucks. The other thing is, and I get accused of being a hobby hater and all this stuff, and I think I've been super fair to hobby. I tell it like it is, I give you the pros and cons. I don't have any skin in the game. I'm not one of their pro staffer. I don't, I mean, I've been, I got in free stuff from hobby before. Like, a, what was it, like a, uh, life well i think it was or something like that things like that i mean if i want a hobby kayak i would like say oh they're the best thing ever blah blah, blah and they'll probably want to work with me <laughs> but no bro i'm not gonna put my reputation on the line i'm gonna tell you my truth what i believe talking about that there's a lot of bad news going around when it comes to hobby kayaks and warranty issues i get dm from people saying that they wouldn't owner a certain warranty that Hobie is not gonna replace a hole if it's older than one year like I get a lot of comments like that and if you go to the Facebook groups you're gonna find a lot of people complaining about that issue that simply Hobie is not responding to warranty claims and that sucks about your kayak I was thinking the other day oh what if I find a good deal on a Hobie say a Hobie Outback uh, or something like that. It's being sold, let's say, for a thousand dollars. I could flip it for two thousand dollars quick. And I'm thinking, why even bother? What if that Outback has issues? You know, like I'm questioning it. Like before, I was like, ah, it's a new kayak. It's a hobby. It's gonna the hole is gonna be replaced if something happens. You have nothing to worry about. Amazing warranty. Amazing customer service. But now I have my own doubts, and that sucks about your hobby kayak that you cannot really trust that you're gonna get service i can't guarantee it and they see i don't have the confidence so that sucks the fourth thing that completely sucks about your hobby kayak especially if you have a hobby per angler is that they're not as stable as you think hobby per anglers 
are built for big water. That means they have to be efficient on the water. They have to be speedy. If you use a drive, if you paddle it, good luck. So the secondary stability is not there. If you sit on that high seat and you move just a little of your center of gravity, you're gonna flip. And a lot of people have flipped in the ocean, in tournaments, in a lot of places because they think their hobby kayak, the pro angler, are super stable and they're simply not. Even in the same line though, when it comes to hobby kayaks, the hobby outback is more stable than your pro angler 12 or 14 because the seat is lower. It's not that as a whole it's a more stable boat. No, it's not. But the way you use it, you're going to be sitting on that pro angler seat. You're going to be sitting high. Even if you want to bring it down, you're still going to be sitting higher than most boats. Just like the big water 132 from Old Town. That kayak flips super easy from the sitting position because it's high. And you have those big water designs. Again, that doesn't make it a bad product per se, but you need to know that it's not as stable as you think. Those kayaks are simply not as stable as people think and a lot of people get in trouble, put their life in danger because they hear all this nonsense from people out there saying that the Hobie Pro Anglers and the Big Water 132 from Old Town are stable kayaks when they simply are not. Don't confuse being able to stand on that kayak and walk around and jump and not flipping for stability. Most of the time, you're gonna be sitting down. If something happens that maybe you hook a fish or you cast it the wrong way or the wrong wave hit you, you're flipping over. Just be mindful of that, okay? That totally sucks about the Hobie Pro Anglers, that they're not as stable as you think they are. The fifth reason why your Hobie kayak sucks is because it may not be the best tool for your fishing as you think it is. Number one, it doesn't really offer instant reverse. You could flip the little thingy and go reverse, but that takes some time. If you're finding the biggest fish of your life and you're gonna hit the mangrove, you're gonna hit something and you wanna go in reverse, you may not even know how to execute it. If you're on a propel drive, PDL kayak, you instantly go in reverse because it's, it's instinct and it's instant. But Hobie doesn't offer you that. I'm not saying the Hobie drive is worse than the PDL drive. The Hobie drive has some really good things going for it. It's super light. It's super efficient on the water. It's, an, it's a joy to use. I love that. But the instant reverse is not as instant as it should be. And also it breaks a lot. You're going to have to buy replacement fins. The little rods may bend or break. The amazing thing though is that you could repair them easy and Hobie sells a lot of those parts. So that is really good that you're able to repair your drive if something goes wrong. But it sucks that it doesn't have instant reverse. And the other thing that sucks about your Hobie kayak, unless you fix this by installing a motor on it, and I highly recommend you use a Bisbee if you have an Outback, or if you need that extra power, get a new Port Vessel 3 horsepower and pair up with the Amped Outdoors lithium batteries. And since you made it this far, maybe you really like me, use coupon code ALIAS5 to save you 5% on that Amped Outdoor lithium battery and you're gonna need it for everything. So, Hobie kayaks and PDL kayaks in general do not offer you the ability to truly be hands-free. Put a camera on and see how many times you touch that handle either on the left or the right depending on what kind you have when you're fishing i bet you your hands is always there so you basically only have one hand free cannot even fish properly with that now if you have a motor on the same kayak on that hobby kayak that of yours that you know i'm making this video saying that it sucks giving you reasons why it sucks um you're gonna fix that problem because you're gonna be able to just set the speed of the motor and steer with your feet that are basically doing nothing and you're gonna have your hands your both hands truly free to fish and i'm gonna make that video soon why pedal drive kayaks are dead 2.0 because it's time that i do that now i don't want to leave this video without some positive stuff because 
Hobie makes really good products. I know they're overpriced. I know they have issues right now, but man, the Hobie Outback, it's, it's an amazing kayak. It's a joy to use. I really love that kayak. I will buy one, like if I wasn't doing YouTube, I will have a Hobie Outback and a Old Town Autopilot. Those two kayaks, I'll be super happy with those two. So to close this video, at the end of the day, the only person who can tell you whether your kayak sucks or not is you. If you have a Hobie kayak and it meets all your requirements and you have a wonderful time on the water every time you take it out, that's all you need to know. You don't need my opinion, you don't need nobody's opinion. As long as it works for you, that's all it matters. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm going to link a few below, uh, below around here, and I'll see you over there.